Hello there, and welcome back to The Shank is Intact. Today's video is episode one in a series I would like to title, History After the Dig. Sometimes you don't realize what you have dug until you get home and clean it up. This is one of those cases. This button right here that I dug depicts Vice Admiral Edward Vernon, and the day that I found it, I had no idea the history I was about to learn. So who is this man depicted on the button I dug? Well, we need to go back to the late 1600s for that. So let's take a second and learn about his past. Edward Vernon was born in Westminster, England on November 12, 1684, son of James and Mary Vernon. He attended Westminster School and entered the Royal Navy in 1700. By 1722, Vernon had returned to Parliament. Then, in the 1730s, he was a powerful advocate for the war with Spain. When the War of Jenkins' Ear against the Spanish broke out in 1739, he undertook his most notable victory with the capture of their base at Portobello, Panama, with only six ships. This he did in a famous landing against its Iron Castle, since the Spaniards had neglected preparations for its defense. During the War of Jenkins' Ear, George Washington's half-brother, Lawrence, served under Admiral Vernon, and upon his return to Virginia in the fall of 1742, Lawrence took control of the property that at that time was known as Little Hunting Creek. In 1743, he inherited the property and renamed it Mount Vernon in honor of the admiral he served under and admired. In my research, I found that Lawrence Washington would have returned to Virginia at the port in King George, which makes me think that whoever wore the button I found out there also served under Vernon. During his career with the Navy, the term grog that we are all used to hearing when referring to the rum that sailors of the time would drink was actually named after Edward. In 1740, he ordered his men's rum ration be served diluted with water for health reasons. This grog rapidly became the standard way of serving the naval rum ration until it was abolished in 1970. So, fast forward to January 3rd, 2021, and that's when I found this beautiful button depicting Edward Vernon. Let's go to the clip of that now, and you'll see in the video, I had no idea what this was. At first I thought it was a coin, judging by the signal, but I noticed right away it was a large flat button, but I did not notice the design, the shape, or of course any of the history. Let's look at that now. Okay, we've got a oh, we got another good signal out here in the hole. Let's find it. It's a good squeaker. Even 20 on the equinox, which is, as we all know, is a good sign. And we hope it's not trash. And hopefully it's not a bottle either. We have dug a lot of trash today. Uh, use the shovel here so it's... Okay, it's right down in here. Yeah. Hopefully it's not glass. It's here. I've got it in this pile. Here it is. Definitely going to be a coin of some kind. It looks very thin. And then... Or it could... Oh, no, it's going to be a big flat button. Awesome. Look at that. Uh, does a kitty cat want to see it? We got a kitty cat with us in here. What's her name? Bella, right? No, Penny. 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 Bella's the dog. Hey, Penny. Hi, look, a flat button. Shank intact. She's looking over there. Sorry. Oh, she's looking at them. They're over there digging. They ain't found much yet. Cool, guys. We'll be right back. Let's see you at the next hole. I just love the fact that some of the finds have a historical significance that you don't figure out until long after they are out of the ground. So I hope with this series, History After the Dig, we can begin to highlight certain relics from our past that hold their very own story. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on this walk through our history.